Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope you're all doing very well. As we're winding down this wonderful, amazing month of Ramadan, our series is also coming to an end. Today we will be talking about surah number 90, surah Balad. This surah consists of 20 verses and it was revealed in Makkah. And in today's brief reminder, I'll share with you lessons that are contained in the first four verses only. And again, as always, I urge you that after watching all of these series, you pick up the Mus'haf, read the translation, and listen to a tafsir. And inshallah ta'ala, keep an eye on my social media handles. I will be doing lots of classes around the Quran, things from the Quran, some um, historical integrity of the Quran, and all of these things will come inshallah ta'ala in the future. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me a life, to give whatever little services I can to the Quran and through that services to you in better appreciating the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us begin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim la uqsimu bihada al-balad wa anta hillum bihada al-balad wa walidin wa ma walad laqad khalaqna al-insana fi kabad These first four verses begin with an oath. And again, the theme of oaths we're seeing over and over, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala driving a point home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizing something so important for us to internalize, understand, and implement in our lives. Allah azza wa jal revealed this surah in Makkah, as I alluded to earlier. And he is telling the Rasul, peace be upon him, لا أقسم بهذا البلد Indeed, I am taking an oath, I swear, by this city. لا أقسم بهذا البلد This city. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, peace be upon him, at a time when Islam was weak, at a time when there wasn't much Muslims were being persecuted, subhanAllah. Allah is telling and predicting to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that Makkah is going to be a center of prominence, a world center of prominence, a center of guidance. The light of guidance shall shine from Makkah across the entirety of the planet. لا أقسم بهذا البلد. So within this, there is an implicit statement to the Rasul, peace be upon him, that don't worry, things will get better. And how much, my dear listeners, in these dark times of the pandemic, and as we're seeing, أعوذ بالله, horrible tragedies unfolding around the world, we need messages of positivity. We need messages of optimism. But my dear listeners, how did that positivity, how did that, uh, those good days come in the life of the Rasul, peace be upon him, and the companions? It came through hard work. It came through sacrifices. It came through loyalty and devotion, dedication to this faith. Let's ask ourselves, how devoted and dedicated are you and I to the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the same type of victory that came to the Rasul, peace be upon him? Just a few years later, the Rasul will conquer Makkah and come as the de facto ruler of Makkah. How did that happen? It came through sacrifices, dedication, devotion, unhinged yaqeen and certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's ask ourselves, is our yaqeen unhinged, our conviction in the success, in the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how convinced are we? How much do we believe in that? And how much are we acting upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us? Just this one verse gives us so much opportunity and I can go on and on, but time is of the essence. Allah says, and you are dwelling freely in this city. You're not under any captivity or any bondage, Ya Rasulullah. You are living and dwelling here freely. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by the parent and the offspring. Why father and son or parent and children? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look at how miraculous this uh, relationship is. How much parents love their children, how much children love their parents. From this, scholars also say, since the theme over here is Makkah and the Kaaba and the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the Kaaba, then the father or the parent mentioned here is Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the son or the child mentioned here is none other than his descendant, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَوَالِدٍ وَمَا وَلَدٍ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ Now those three oaths 
were leading to this critical juncture. In my previous episodes, I've talked about this whole uh, theme of oaths, that we pay attention to the oaths. What are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by? And where is it leading to? What is the central point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driving home? And that is this point, verse number four. Indeed, we have created the human being in toil. We have created the human being in struggle. We've created the human being in hardship. Subhanallah, something so powerful over here. Now, when I say in hardship, we're not saying it was hard for Allah to create the human being. No, no, no. Allah is saying the human being is constantly surrounded by hardship. So much for me and you to learn from this. My dear listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us life is not going to be a bed of roses. Life will come with its joys and delights and pleasures and enjoyments coupled with grief, sadness, anger, sorrows. All of these things will make up life. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ And what you and I need to understand over here is there are those who in their foolishness reject God Almighty. Thinking that why is there difficulty? Why is there suffering in this world? And they're looking for that perfection. And that perfection is there. It's coming in the afterlife. It's coming in, as Allah says, الحاقة, in the true reality. Because this dunya, in a way, it's an illusion, Right? Meaning, you and I need to put in effort to have perpetual bliss and enjoyment in the life to come. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, and, and in this there's so much beauty for us to understand, that we are in the days of Ramadan, right? And how much we look forward to the time of iftar. And because our minds, our hearts are on the food, because you've been so hungry and thirsty the entire day, making dua at that time has a higher chance of acceptance because you're showing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his rada, his pleasure means more to us than the food and the drink. But you appreciate that food and drink more, right? Why? Because you've gone through the difficulty of hunger, of thirst. So when we go through difficulty and hardship, then the relief that comes afterwards is all the more sweeter. What would be the case of somebody who never sacrificed anything in their lives? All they got was anything and everything they wanted at the twinkling of an eye, at the snap of a finger, it was in front of them. These individuals will not really appreciate what it means to yearn for something, to work hard for something in order to gain that thing that they wanted to gain. So what better to explain this to us than this beautiful month of Ramadan? So do not forget this. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ You look at the life of the Rasul, peace be upon him, goes back to the first verse. And subhanAllah, my time is almost up. You go back to the first verse. The Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't he and the companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them, Allahumma ameen, go through immense hardship, immense hardship in order to arrive at this point in their lives. After hardship, look at the ease that came in the life of the Rasul, peace be upon him. So life will bring its curveballs. It will bring all of those difficulties, but it will make those pleasures all the more important. There's also a psychological or spiritual aspect, a psycho-spiritual aspect, if you like, in this powerful verse. And that is, you will find contentment and happiness and acceptance when you choose to be happy. There are people who have everything you can ask for, but they're not happy. And there are those who live with absolutely nothing, but they're content and they're happy. Happy on their tongue is nothing but alhamdulillah, praise of Allah, gratitude of Allah. So you and I need to get into that state of being grateful to Allah in whatever situation he has given us, whatever situation he's put us through. My dear listeners, right before the Ramadan, the month of Ramadan started, I was in, at the cemetery at the jaznaza of an elderly lady. May Allah grant her jannatul firdaus, Allahumma ameen, and give sabr to her surviving family members. And it was a stark reality that this is the true, this is the truth, that this dunya is just a place of, you know, such temporality, such a temporal existence. And then on the 25th night of Ramadan, there was a tragedy where a young child passed away. And you can imagine how devastating it was for his parents and the entire family members. And then once again, I found myself in the cemetery on the 26th day of Ramadan. Subhanallah. So this should tell us that life is just so fragile. 
it knows death knows no age or gender or uh you know your socio political place in society no that when the time is up your time is up and here we come to the fact that my time is up subhanallah so something for us to think about how we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we deal with the circumstances that come our way, we should be in a state of gratitude. I end with a reminder, my dear listeners, almost every year in the apartheid state of Israel, Palestinians have been, uh, trans. their rights have been trampled upon and transgressed upon. It happens pretty much every single year in Ramadan, but this is the first time it's happening in the last 10 nights where Palestinians are being uh, harassed to no end and even live bullets are used in certain cases alongside rubber bullets and whatnot and this is happening in the village of Sheikh Jarrah educate yourself about this get in touch with your local MPs and try to uh, tell them with stand f f with the Palestinian people with the oppressed as the Rasul peace be upon him taught us that the Muslims stand with truth and justice so make sure you educate yourself about what's happening and Share these on your social media feeds. I'll put some of these links in the description of this video. If you found this episode beneficial, do consider sharing it far and wide in all of your social media networks and follow me on my Facebook page, my subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instagram handle. All details are given in the description of this video. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.